Take a full look at your network with Glasswire. For more information, check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CP Moddy here, back with another video, and about a year ago, I published a video taking another look at Windows 10 in 2017 to really see, was it still rubbish? And I concluded that, yeah, there was still quite a few problems, but it was getting better and better. And well, a year later, I thought, why not go ahead and revisit the exact same thing, except with the latest version of Windows 10, to see really how it stands up. Surely Microsoft and the Windows team have gotten their act together, and they've done something in the whole year that they've had between, well, the last video and also to this video. So for the past few weeks, in fact, the past three weeks, I've been running Windows 10 Pro on my desktop and also to this guy, my laptop PC, the XPS 15 9550. And this was my use case for these two pieces of tech. So I thought, let's go ahead and see what it is. I went ahead, did a fresh install. So they're brand new, the latest version. This is the uh, April creators update, I think it is, or just April update, whatever it is, will be on the screen if I got it totally wrong. Otherwise I was totally right. And the only time I didn't use Windows those 10 was when I had to admin my server, which was server 2012 R2, uh, essentially based on 8.1, but I did some adminning on it and then went back to the Windows 10 system. So Windows 10 launched 1064 days ago, 12 hours and 54 minutes, not like we're really counting, but if you want to be really specific, 25 seconds. So it has been a bit of time since Windows has launched. In fact, over two and a half years that they've had to potentially listen to their feedback and act on it. But let's see whether they really did. So again, this is the latest update as of the time of recording, which a major update has been, I believe, the April update. And and we went ahead and run that, just the latest ISO off of the Windows website. So we'll kick things off on a little bit more of a negative note with some of the downsides that I found still with Windows 10. First and foremost, was scaling. Scaling was something that I really didn't like last time, and whilst it's definitely gotten better, it is still no good at all. Compared to something like Mac OS or even Linux at that, they both have much better scaling options. Even on the XPS 15, Linux scales so much better than what Windows does offer, and there's really no reason as to why Windows and Microsoft themselves can't get their act together to get scaling going. Even though Windows has their new scaling options that set each individual application, but the fact of the matter is that it isn't still that great. For example, uh, IntelliJ is a great example of a piece of software that I use almost on a daily basis that just doesn't work very well with Windows scaling. For instance, if you were to go ahead and write a JFrame application, it'll show up the whole IntelliJ UI very nicely, but when you launch the application, it's like a small dot in the middle of the screen, not really something that I'm the biggest fan of. Now, most users will never run into this issue, but if you have specific applications that you specifically need for a specific job, you kind of need them to work, and having a small dot in the center of your screen really isn't that great. Now again, most users won't run into this issue, but nevertheless, it still was an issue for me. And when you finally do scale things up, things also to become blurry. Now, Microsoft has introduced a new feature to help cut down on some of that blur and those issues right there, but scaling all in all is just not a problem. Why can't Windows take the same approach as Linux and Mac side, where you just make things bigger, render it at 1080, on the fly upscale to 4K, boom, you are done. Now, yes, there's a lot more under the hood that needs to be done than just render 1080 and upscale, but for the sake of it, I don't know why Mac OS and even the free Linux, again, seem to get this right, and and Windows doesn't seem to get it right, even though Windows 10 costs so much more than either of those two operating systems. And I'm really just not a big fan. Continuing on, there's also two other issues that I ran into whilst using Windows 10, uh, and that is the stability of the thing. Now, don't get me wrong, it was rather stable on my XPS 15, as it was designed around Windows 10, has Skylake chips and all those kind of things. Uh, but when it was definitely over on my desktop PC with X99 and all the drivers installed and all that, there was an un um, just unbelievable amount of crashing. In the three weeks that I used it, I counted over 150 blue screens in just the three week period. That's an insane amount of time and most, if not all of them, blue screened when I was in the middle of doing something with Premiere Pro or some sort of Adobe application. Now, yes, this may just be an Adobe thing, but every time I tried to do a pro application or use a pro application, there'll be some sort of hanging, crashing, mismanagement of resources. It was really just all over the place and seeing that I do spend a lot of time editing videos for here on YouTube and also to for client work, 
it is a really big problem when my main PC can't even edit a video without blue screening and that is a really big disaster. One of the worst things that popped up throughout the uh, couple weeks that I've been using was I had a uh, 24 and a half hour render uh, that I needed to do. 23 hours in, Windows 10 crashed, didn't it? And I lost the entire render. So I was really not impressed on how well it works, even though I was running Windows 10 Pro, which you would think is more designed for pro applications, even though they're all based on the same kernel. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is even Windows Pro still couldn't handle a pro type of application, which was a really big letdown for me and just left me thinking, what the hell am I doing with this operating system that even some like Windows 7 and 8.1 and heck, even Windows Vista would be better at this than Windows 10 for these type of pro applications. Now, someone might say that I just had a misconfiguration of drivers or software or had something weird on it. To be quite honest, I had the SSD, clean install of Windows 10, the drivers for the motherboard and any of the peripherals that I had, and then Premiere Pro and also to the other Adobe application. So there's nothing else that was really causing it to crash other than Windows 10 itself and not playing nice with the applications that were on board. So uh, that wasn't really a big plus for me. Then over on the laptop side, the new power menu that is found down here is definitely kind of interesting, but where on earth is the battery time? This is something that I really didn't like Mac OS taking out uh, was the um, estimation of how much time and Windows has gone ahead and done it as well. Don't get me wrong, you can use the mouse and hover down in the corner and it will bring up a um, amount of time you have left, but I don't see why we have so much space in this menu and not have how much time we have left for the battery. Now being someone who is a student, having the actual knowledge of how much time I've got left on battery is very, very important. So why on earth can we not fill this massive gap with a time? Again, we have to hover down on the battery to find out how long we have battery left. I've just gone ahead and left battery by installed. It works perfectly fine for me, but there is really no way or no reason rather why Windows needs to remove the battery countdown timer. On the Mac side, they took it out because the new MacBooks had terrible battery life, but on the Windows side, they don't make hardware apart from the surfaces and they have pretty good battery life at that. So why on earth did they need to take that out? On top of this, power management just has this stupid slider now, which I'm really not a fan of. I like to be able to choose high performance, power saving, custom and all that kind of stuff rather than just moving a slider left to right. Now, yes, you can still make custom power things and all that type of stuff, but I'm really not a fan of this stupid little slider mode. It is easy to accidentally change and then, oh, now you're in high performance mode and you really didn't need to be. It just doesn't work for me. So all in all, I'm not a fan of that new power menu that does come up with the new version of Windows 10. Sure, it looks kind of aesthetically pleasing, nice little window there, but it really doesn't do anything if you are more of a power user. All in all though, not a really big fan. Moving on, continuing I guess with UI, and that is the settings is still all over the place. Last time, I honestly did think uh, that the settings and the whole UI would be more uniformed in the next update of Windows 10. Unfortunately, that is not really the case. The system is very much fragmented. You can be in the really nice Windows 10 UI, the nice settings uh, window, and then all of a sudden be dumped into a window that looks like it's straight out of, you know, 2001. It is really not a great uh, experience. Even Linux has this down pat where all the windows across the board look exactly the same. Mac OS has the same thing, but Windows, it's like you got some of Windows 10 over here, some of Windows like XP over here, Windows 95 over there. It is very all over the place. Now, yes, the argument can be made that the tools that look like they're straight out of 2001 really aren't going to be used on a day to day basis by the average end user, but the fact of the matter is, if you're paying for a full license of Windows 10, you kind of expect the whole experience to be one whole experience, not just a bit from here, a bit from here. Oh, look, now we've got Windows 10. The UI is something that really does bug me, and it's really easy just to find your way into these old, weird legacy things that still have a lot of functionality, but don't have the same UI, and that really does break the whole experience for me. But all in all, that UI really doesn't do me many favors. However, on the things that I actually did like as of this version of Windows 10 here in 2018. First and foremost was those glass transparent type of effects. I really did enjoy them, and being a fan of the Windows Vista 7 and 8 and the whole glass arrow effect, I was really happy to see some sort of a translucency coming back. Don't get me wrong, I really love material design and the whole Google Android thing, but uh, on my desktop PC personally, I prefer those glass type of effects. 
discs. So Windows 7 and 8.1, definitely a big fan of those. So it's nice to see some sort of translucency and uh, nice clean UI starting to come back to Windows 10. The update also to introduce some more small steps across the whole operating system, making it slightly more stable, even though I did have all those crashes. Uh, but all in all, it was just slightly better from the last time that I did use Windows 10. Sure, I did have a bunch of crashes, but all in all, it was slightly better, especially on the laptop and mobile side, with a lot fewer crashes, a lot better battery life, and more importantly, a lot better hardware management when on the go, which was a major problem that I had last time, although I didn't exactly touch on it too much. Um, the on-the-go ability, I guess you could call it, of the laptops have definitely gotten a lot better with the new version of Windows 10. Oh. And also too, Task Manager has definitely taken a massive step up. This is something that I really do like. Task Manager has now got GPU integration and the only thing that we're really missing inside of Task Manager is temperature monitoring. Once we get temperature monitoring, I'd say 90% of hardware monitors out there will become obsolete. There is so much information jam-packed into Task Manager, I absolutely love it. So I really wish we could get Windows Task Manager from Windows 10 onto things like 7 and 8.1 because the amount of information jammed into that program now is unfreaking believable. And heck, as a Mac user as well, I wish we had that Task Manager over on the Mac side. There's just so much information there. I absolutely love it. Honestly, if they were to implement uh, temperature monitoring, I'd probably switch my test bench PC and also to a couple other testing PCs that I have in here to t uh, Windows 10 100% of the time because that is something that I absolutely would love to have. So, uh, Windows, I would love to see uh, temp monitoring in your next update. But all in all, that task manager, really, really impressed with what they've done here. Again, I wish Apple would copy this. Uh, really, really nice to see. Notifications have also too gotten a bit of a step up from where they were. I was never really a fan of the whole notification system on Windows 10, uh, but definitely seeing them now actually integrated, in my opinion, a little bit better. You've got your quick controls down here, which have always been there, but I think they just look slightly better and they're a little bit better in their functionality. Maybe that's just me. And also to the notifications that come up are a little bit better in my opinion, but all in all that notification shade definitely a little bit better. Now as I did mention, 4K scaling has definitely seen a step up and I do have to give it credit where credit is due, it is a bit better than what it was originally, but it's still not exactly the best. They did go ahead and actually implement uh, a new little window that helps with um, working out all the blurring, so if you were to upscale a program, generally you'll get some blur. So what they've actually gone ahead and done is put in an advanced scaling option to help you dial in what kind of scaling you need for your system, which I definitely have to say is a massive thumbs up from me, especially with a laptop with a really nice 4K screen, being able to take advantage of it and run programs properly is something that I really do appreciate. So, whilst it's exactly not exactly the world's best scaling, I do have to say that it isn't as bad as it once was when Windows 10 was first released. So, hey, I'm not the biggest fan, but still give it credit for the work that they are at least showing that they are trying to put in. May not be the world's biggest step, but a baby step is better than no steps at all. And as I concluded last time, the new iteration of Windows 10 is more of a baby step as I keep coming back to rather than a leap or a massive jump in the whole user experience. Sure, there's updates here and there, but a lot of the things that we have gotten are just minor and small improvements to the whole experience. However, if you were to step back and take this version and compare it to the first version, I do have to say there is definitely a night and day difference on the positive side. But all in all, really, even though there are some nice updates, I'm not the biggest fan of Windows 10 anymore. I really did start to like the previous creators update, but with this creators update, or rather this update in general, it's starting to wear thin on me to the point where I actually went out and did get a Mac because I'm so sick of some of the problems that do come up with Windows 10. Don't get me wrong, for general day-to-day -day usage, web browsing, playing games, and a lot of things that most people would do in a system, it worked absolutely flawless and had a really good experience. But as someone who is also to a student, does some software development and a lot of other things in terms of pro applications and administration that you may not find every single user doing, I did have a few more problems on the Windows side than over on the Mac side. Even though on the Mac side you still have to run a VM with Windows in it, I found better doing that than it was to run the Windows 10 machine as a dedicated system. Again, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that Windows 10 is a terrible experience for everybody, but for me personally, it just doesn't live up to all the hype that Windows is trying to give it and what a lot of people are getting in terms of their user experience. But when it comes down to tech for me, I always say if it just works, I will always use it. And for me, Windows 10 just doesn't exactly work for me. Sure, it may get a lot of people's jobs done, but for me, it really isn't as good as say Linux or even 
even Mac OS and the terrible battery implementation, the weird fragmentation of the UI, it really doesn't make me a happy user and for the price that you pay for a Windows 10 Pro key is really a pain in the, well, Windows 10 licensing. Now sure, Windows 10 is a night and day difference today than it once was, but even that night and day difference isn't really a very good one. When it comes down to Windows for me, 7 and even 8.1 provide a much better and much more consistent and reliable experience despite being, well, supported less and less and less as every day goes past. But let me know what your experience of Windows 10 is down in the comment sections. Have you had a really positive one or have you had a few too many problems like what I've had? Do let me know down below. Thanks all for watching and if you want to buy a Windows 10 key, I'll leave some links down in that description box. Thanks all for watching. I'll Catch you all in the next one.